Some of my most fruitful outreach opportunities happened when I just tried. Often it was the ideas that I least expected to work that resulted in lasting friendships and even a salvation. I tried spiritual surveys, asking a question about God with 10 random guys. I also tried standing on campus with circus balls or keeping perspective cards in my backpack. I have many stories about how just trying and doing anything to connect with people grew my heart and showed me that people are actually willing to talk, and some are also hungry for the gospel. Talking to people about spiritual matters in different contexts can feel intimidating and scary, but it can also be a way that you can engage your friends, coworkers, or even the random person in spiritual conversation and it can change their eternity. When I was a senior, my roommate and I and some of our friends decided it'd be a great idea to go out to Sproul Plaza and set up a seven foot blackboard with questions written in chalk. We asked questions like, what's the purpose of life? What brings you meaning? My biggest fear is, why, what what, what do we all share in common? I was horrified to ask people to fill out our board. Who's gonna write on a seven foot wall their ideas and thoughts? And how is that gonna lead to spiritual conversation? Now, luckily enough, I was proven wrong. Not only were people willing to fill out a seven-foot chalkboard in the middle of campus, but they wanted to talk. People are interested. They're wondering whether their identity can be found in their skin color or academics or in something deeper. Two years after I graduated, a couple friends and I also decided to go on campus to do frat outreach. Now we split up two by two and we uh, equipped with only a spiritual survey sheet, a clipboard, pen, and hopeful hearts. We took a Wednesday night around 6.30 p.m. and went to the frats, introducing ourselves as campus ministers. We asked what the spiritual climate was like at their fraternity. Uh, Were there any guys who went to church and would they like to start a group that meets at their house? It sounds brave and really forward, but I blundered through the whole experience, usually introducing myself and then putting my head down and asking my leader to take the lead for the rest of the conversation. Walking up to a house of people that I had never met was scary and I cracked under the pressure. The other group of guys, they actually came back and they said that other people had invited them to come back. The frat guy that they met was ecstatic that they were Christians who could explain and defend their faith. He and a couple of his frat friends really wanted to talk, uh, but they didn't have someone to talk Christianity through with. My friends who went to that frat house, they really weren't that awesome. But their willingness to go and engage the guys, that made a difference. And it may may have actually helped move them a step closer to seeking God. During one of my summer internships, uh, again, I actually took a deck of perspective cards to work with me and left it on the table while I was eating. No one came to join me, and I finished my meal in isolation. But as I was packing up, some coworkers from a different department who knew that I was Christian came over, noticing my cards. They asked if I was playing a game. I told them it wasn't a game, but if they'd be willing, we could do it together. Surprisingly, they agreed. My coworkers were about two times my age, and preaching to them about the purpose and meaning of life may not have gone over so well. So instead, I just opened the deck and asked them questions as they came up. The nature of God, meaning and purpose of life human nature, and the identity of Jesus. I didn't give them answers to the questions, but only asked their perspectives each round, interspersed with questions like, where did you learn that from? Or why do you think that? By the end of our conversation, they were asking me what I believed and how I would answer the questions. Part of evangelism involves getting to know the other person and what belief systems and past experiences they're coming from. Curiosity in the other person is helpful when connecting with others. Making the effort to show interest in trying to understand the other person and their viewpoints helps them feel more heard, and they'll usually want to hear from you. Lastly, I want to end with saying, you never know what our little efforts of spiritual conversation will lead to. One spring semester, a friend and I went to campus to do spiritual surveys. I was about to end my time and was ready to go, but I committed to asking one more person. One guy walked by, and initially I dismissed him, thinking he was too old and mean-looking. Uh, but I decided I might as well ask. The worst he could say was no. He was an exchange student uh, from China, and he's actually majoring in physics and a self-proclaimed atheist. Our conversation continued for 20 minutes. By the end of it, we planned to meet at a cafe a week later and continue talking. We met the next Sunday and actually ended up starting Course 101. And nine weeks later, in a noodle shop on the north side of Berkeley, that guy, Mason, decided to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of his life. Never in my wildest dreams would I have expected to have been able to witness such a transformation in someone's life. Nor could I have imagined that a spiritual survey would be the starting point for Mason's eternity. But it was, and it can be. Don't sell yourself short of the opportunity to preach the gospel to somebody else. And don't sell somebody else short of the opportunity to respond to the gospel. This I know. Just go out and do it.